so today's video is going to be broken up into two different parts. There's two projects I'm trying to do. This is a 1993 1200XL Sportster, and what I'm basically doing is replacing the rear wheel. It's got some weather rot, and I'm going to go ahead and sandblast it while I'm, while I'm in there and make it look like the front one. The front one has already been replaced. Uh, if anybody wants to know how to do that, I can always do another video for it and just go, go over the steps. It's a pretty simple replacement. Um, sandblasting, uh, there was a learning curve there, so hopefully the second time around is not going to be so bad. Uh, back one, back here, that's why I got the stick so I can point the things. It's got a black powder coat all in it, it's all chipped and flaky, and the whole thing's just a little bit corroded from where. The whole bike's a little bit corroded, but. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this back tire off. We'll go ahead and replace it. Um, the cost savings is immense for the price of the front and rear tire and the extra tools that I needed to break the bead. Uh, yeah, save a lot of money. So we'll get to it. Uh, first thing we got to do is jack it up. In tradition of not having the appropriate tools, I did at least buy a motorcycle jack, but this is the cheapest, crummiest jack you can get. If you're going to jack up your motorcycle for shining or do something else, you know, you're going to get in there and actually get it clean. Uh, this does not get my jack recommendation. I would definitely get a nice hydraulic lift with a rubber flatbed. But since I'm only changing tires, it works out real good for me. Basically the motorcycle version of a scissor lift jack for the car. If you got two people around, I would recommend using two people for this. Uh, just to try and keep the bike steady as she's going up. see as this goes, it only ends up jacking about half of the bike up. So you really got to be careful about placement. Or end up lifting the front tire instead of the rear. tires off the ground. This video is going to stop start a little bit in editing because I'm going to have to switch sides to get the brakes off so you just expect that. While I got them all assembled over here what you're going to have to do uh, a lot of people put a lot of chrome stuff on their bike. This bike just happened to have chrome on it when I ended up getting it from the guy I bought it off of. And you'll see there's a, there's a cover here, and what looks like a cover here. Sometimes these are covers, in my case it's not, it's an actual tensioning bolt replacement, which was another, uh, another lesson I learned, trying to get it off. It did not bang off like I thought it would. So I already took them off the other side so you could see them. Um, almost all these covers are held on by a small uh, hex nut that goes in there and kind of pinches it in. Uh, these main pinch nuts, I loose them up, they come right off. Real simple. Uh, if you got a different style bike, uh, a lot of times it'll have just a flat plate and a, a bolt on it, and people put covers on those that operate very much the same. Uh, I thought it was one of those. It did have a pinch bolt down on the bottom, which I took all the way off, still couldn't get it out, and that's because this is the actual tensioning bolt right here. It's holding the actual belt tight. So a lot of times it'll just be a plate and a bolt here. Uh, this one's actually this, which is actually too bad because I was going to replace it. Uh, they're rusted up pretty good, but probably keep it because this will be a more expensive part since it's the actual bolt itself. It's not just a chrome cover.
All right, so what you're seeing here is the other side of the bike. I've gone ahead and removed all the tensioning bolts and, and the pinch clip uh, cover. I haven't actually pulled out the axle. What we're going to do is remove the caliper. It's a Torx bolt. You can see it's wet. I sprayed some liquid, uh, some liquid wrench on it. I'm going to pull it off. Actually, just put it over to the side. There's a piece over here holding in the hose. It actually bends out a little bit. Allow you to move it without actually uh, taking off the brake line. Um, I pre-loosened these so you didn't have to have to see me struggle. They uh, they're really tight. So there's a couple ways you could do it. I have a standard, very terrible torque, and it just kept slipping out on me. Um, if you need more leverage. You can always box wrench it. It uh, works really good for other wrenches. Really crummy with torques and hex bolts because it slips or it ends up yanking out. You got a got a good chance that you're gonna end up pulling it out. Uh, easiest way for me that I've found is if you got one of one of these uh, wrenches where you can dump little bits in, little magnetic bits. Uh, a lot of times they'll fit like right on the end, and it would make sense for leverage to try and do it like that. But the problem is, is you got a lot of play this way and you end up pulling it out. You can actually get more pull, push on it by getting it in that way and actually pulling it. Going ahead and loosening it up and that's how I ended up getting them done. So we'll go ahead and take this off. I'm going to go ahead and inspect the bolts once they're uh, they're dried off and before I put them back in. If they've gotten rounded out in any way, uh, I'll go ahead and replace them. This isn't something I want to I want to have to drill out someday. Never do this again. Huh. Bolts only threaded on the on the top end, the rest of it's just a little holder. Front caliper is a lot like that too. Has some weird shaped bolts on it. All the panting you hear in the background is, is my dog. He likes to hang out in the garage and keep me company while I do dumb projects like this. Yeah, same thing for that one. I'm just going to slide this off. There we go. We've got a spring for holding the actual pads in. Not doing too terrible. I found the easiest way for me is to try and set everything down next to the bike the way I took it off and hope none of my kids come out and and kick it. <laughs> it's worked for me well in the past. Um, yep, so that's it. Caliper's off. On this side, you'll notice it just looks like a normal nut right here. On the other side, there is a cotter pin retention nut. You would have seen previously in the video. Looks like that. There's a cotter pin that goes through it through a hole in the actual shaft. So you're gonna go ahead and at least loosen it up. Don't take it all the way off yet. That'll make life a little easier if you leave it on. Otherwise that axle may try and push through on you. What you gotta do is slide the entire wheel up. You see there's a slot right here. 
You want to push all the way to the front. What that allows you to do. I already knock it all out. Alright, I already did that. What that allows you to do is actually get this belt peeled off. Which you're gonna need to do to get this tire off of here. Instead of doing that, I'll just drop it out of the way of the belt guard. See if that works for me. So you got it loose, you can actually hammer the axle all the way through. It should come right out. This will free up the entire. Spacer in there. That spacer actually looks like it goes in between your uh, your drive pulley and the actual swing arm. Got a little bit more room to push this sucker up. That's what was killing me. Hmm, didn't foresee that being a problem. So right now the uh, thing that's holding me up is my license plate. The thing is bendy. I guess you're gonna have to jack this bike up a lot more. Be able to get this out. That's the wheel assembly. To do the sandblasting, we're actually going to pull this off and the disc. There's the other spacer. We're going to plug this all up real good so that the bearings stay good. Otherwise, you got to remove the bearings. Honestly, I may just remove the bearings. Uh, front wheel was a disaster with that. And because I took it off the way I did without taking the belt off completely appropriately, I'm going to go through and check the actual belt teeth, make sure I didn't catch it on here and damage the belt in any way because bad drive belt's a bad day. Alright, 